The Boeing B-47 Stratojet was the U.S. Air Force's first jet-powered and first swept-wing bomber. This iconic and innovative aircraft was a hybrid. It mixed the construction techniques of World War II with an aerodynamic design fit for the jet engine era during the latter half of the 20th century. The B-47 was the cornerstone of the Strategic Air Command during the Cold War, where it primarily served as a nuclear bomber capable of striking targets within the Soviet Union. The crews of the B-47 were ready to attack at any given time, and some were even trained to deploy within 15 seconds of each other, giving the United States an unstoppable nuclear strike force capacity. Thanks to Boeing's innovation in this jet-powered swept-wing model, every large jet-powered aircraft used today can be traced back to the B-47. The B-47 represents a milestone in American aviation history and the beginning of a revolution in aircraft design. America's First Swept-Wing Jet Bomber In 1943, the U.S. Army Air Forces issued an informal requirement of a jet-powered recon bomber as a way to prompt American manufacturers to broaden their research into jet bombers. A year later, this concept evolved into an official request for a proposal to design a jet-powered bomber with a maximum speed of 550 miles per hour and a cruise speed of 450 miles per hour. Boeing, Convair, Glenn Martin Company, and North American Aviation submitted their proposals in December 1944. USAAF awarded all four companies with $10 million contracts to develop prototypes. North American and Convair were asked to focus on a four-engine design and Boeing and Martin on a six-engine aircraft. Engineers at Boeing had begun their research into jet-powered aircraft since before the USAEF's official proposal. In the early 1940s, with World War II about to end, Boeing aerodynamicist George Shirer traveled to Germany as part of a research trip. While investigating a hidden and deserted German aeronautics laboratory, Shirer spotted wind tunnel data on swept-wing jets and sent the information to Boeing's headquarters. Back in America, Engineers used the recently built Boeing high-speed wind tunnel to develop the first B-47 prototype with its iconic 35-degree swept-back wings. This innovation would become a milestone in American aviation design history, and every large jet aircraft today is a descendant of this prototype. Another great addition to this aircraft was the engines placed in nacelles suspended under its wings. The B-47 had a crew of three, with a pilot and co-pilot or gunner in tandem inside a large bubble canopy. The navigator, who also worked as a bombardier and radar operator, was tucked away in the nose. Later models had no outside visibility at all. Since early jet engines could not provide enough thrust for launch, the first prototypes of the B-47 had 18 small rocket units in its fuselage for a jet-assisted takeoff. After four years of intensive development and improvements, the first B-47 prototype met its maiden flight on December 17, 1947, exactly 44 years after the Wright brothers' first flights. Test pilots Robert Robbins and Scott Osler took off from the B-47 and flew it for 27 minutes on a trip from Boeing Field in Seattle to Moses Lake Airfield in central Washington state. The prototype was so radical that one of its lead engineers, Holden Withington, was uncertain it would fly as he watched it taxi out for its initial takeoff. Pilot Robbins was also skeptical about the B-47 and later acknowledged that right before his first flight he had prayed, quote, Oh God, please help me through the next two hours. But Robin soon realized that he was flying an extraordinary and groundbreaking aircraft. When famed test pilot Chuck Yeager flew the B-47 for the first time, he noted that it was so aerodynamically pristine that he had difficulty landing it on the Edwards Air Force Base lakebed. While in its testing phase, the jet broke several speed and distance records. Most notably, in 1949, the B-47 crossed the United States in under four hours at an average speed of 608 miles per hour. The jet needed defensive armaments only in its rear because no other fighter was fast enough to attack it from any other angle. The Winner By mid-1948, the North American models beat the Convair four-engine prototypes in the competition. As an interim measure, it was decided to begin with a limited production on the North American model, under the condition that if the winner of the competition between Boeing and Martin was superior, the production would be immediately terminated. But when USAAF noticed the B-47's extraordinary capabilities, a formal contract for 10 aircraft, now nicknamed the Stratojet, was signed on September 3, 1948. 
the Boeing B-47 Stratajet Bomber became the backbone of the newly created Air Force Strategic Air Command. This U.S. military command worked as the Air Force's bombardment branch, as part of the strategic nuclear strike forces against the Soviets during the Cold War. The SAC was in charge of organizing, training, equipping, administrating, and preparing Air Force crews for possible combat. From 1951 through 1965, the B-47 Stratajet was adjusted into multiple models for specialized SAC functions. A total of 2,032 B-47s in all variants were built. The different models operated as missile carriers, recon aircraft, or remote control carriers for other planes. The B-47 first entered service in 1953. The jet handled well in flight, and the controls were described to have a fighter-like light touch. By 1956, USAAF had 28 wings of Stratajet bombers and five wings of the reconnaissance variant. Throughout its service with the SAC, the B-47 operated from bases in Alaska, Greenland, Guam, Morocco, Spain, and the UK. The B-47 was usually on a one-third alert, which consisted of having a third of the aircraft's supply completely available. The Stratajet would be sitting on hard stands or an alert ramp adjacent to the runway, all loaded with fuel and nuclear weapons. The crews would be on standby, ready to attack the Soviets at short notice. These crews were trained to perform minimum interval takeoffs, or MITO, where the B-47s would launch into the air at intervals as short as 15 seconds, which allowed massive launches in little to no time. However, MITOs were dangerous to perform, as the bombers left wingtip vortices and general turbulence behind them. Earlier, models of the B-47's turbojet engines, fitted with water injection systems, generated a heavy, dark smoke cloud, obstructing the pilot's visibility. And although the Stratajet bomber was the cornerstone of the SAC for several years, the jet's production began to decline in the late 1950s, though modifications and rebuilds continued for several years. During its last years in the SAC, B-47 operations migrated from high-altitude bombing scenarios to low-altitude strikes. Stratajet crews were trained in surprise attack methods, coming in at a low level of 425 knots and then climbing quickly near the target before releasing its nuclear payload. Recon. In addition to its primary role as a medium nuclear bomber, the Stratajet's speed and payload made it the perfect aircraft for strategic reconnaissance aircraft missions. From 1952 to 1956, B-47s modified for photographic reconnaissance conducted numerous flyovers of the Soviet Union. They provided detailed pictures of Soviet military and industrial facilities to the United States Air Force in this role. Thanks to these modified Stratajets, valuable photographic intelligence of Soviet defense systems and the Soviet Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Program was obtained. These versions of the aircraft also collected air samples of Soviet nuclear detonations. However, these missions along the Soviet border limits were perilous, and enemy fighters managed to damage one of these recon P-47s and shoot down two more, which resulted in the loss of seven crew members and two temporary POWs. Don't take your eyes off the Stratajet. Another reason for the decline and eventual halt of B-47 production was its accident rate, which would be utterly inadmissible by today's standards. Over its lifetime, over 200 of them, about 10% of the total models produced, were lost in crashes, incurring 464 fatalities. There were many reasons for the number of crashes, but it ultimately came down to crew coordination. Flying the B-47 required a three-man crew, and their coordination could be easily disrupted when any kind of emergency arose. Since some missions lasted over 24 hours, exhaustion, hunger, and weather discomforts also came into play. The innovations of the B-47 boosted its performance, but ultimately caused its downfall. The B-47 required the crew members' undivided attention. Although it was deceptively easy to fly, the aircraft required precise operation during all phases of the flight, from takeoff, in-flight refueling, and instrument flight, to landing maneuvers. Flying the Stratajet was exhausting. For example, Suppose a pilot concentrating on radio instructions let his attention divert with a sudden course change. In that case, the aircraft's high speed could reach a point where recovery was impossible. One of the more notable incidents involving a B-47 Stratajet occurred on February 5, 1958, near Savannah, Georgia. A B-47, based at the Homestead Air Base in Florida, engaged in a simulated combat exercise with an F-88 Sabre fighter. As was customary at the time, 
The Stratojet was carrying a single 7,600-pound Mark 15 nuclear bomb without its core. During this practice exercise, the two aircraft collided accidentally. The F-86 Sabre crashed after the pilot ejected safely, and the B-47 suffered substantial damage, including loss of power in one of its jet engines. After attempting three unsuccessful landings, the pilot had to perform a soft drop of the unloaded weapon off the coast of Savannah, near Tybee Island. After that, the pilot was able to land safely without the thousands of pounds of extra weight. Despite an extensive search, which lasted almost a year, the unarmed bomb was never found. Phase out. In 1963, the final phase out of the Stratojet began, and by 1966, the bomber was entirely out of service with the SAC. The last B-47 belonging to the Air Force, which was assigned to the Air Weather Service, was withdrawn from use until 1989. Simultaneously, another Stratojet model was being used as a testbed for a newly developed fly-by-wire system. The U.S. Navy kept their B-47 test models in their inventory, where it was occasionally used to support the Fleet Electronic Warfare Systems Group all throughout the 1970s. This final aircraft was flown from the Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake to Castle Air Force Base, both in California, for static display at the Castle Air Museum, where it still resides. <laughs>